Hey, what's up everyone? How's it going? It's Corey. I am psyched to be here and I'm so excited to share this live with you. It's going to be amazing. So if you were around, jump on, say hello, tell me where you are in the world and I'll go ahead and get started. So this is about breaking through the analysis paralysis and leaning into your intuition. This is huge. This is critical for your harmony and success in every area of your life. And I'll share some examples from my own life um, related to business and how it has absolutely fundamentally helped shift my business. So to start, just think about, have you ever been in a place where something's not quite working, whether that's your business or relationship or health, and you just can't figure out why, and you have more than enough information, you've done your research, but it just tends to leave you even more confused because it just helps you, it doesn't help you, it just makes you see there's way more options than you actually need. And so you end up spiraling into analysis paralysis, which means, hi, Monica, so nice to see you, which means talking about analysis paralysis, um, when you have all this information and you're trying to make a decision about what's in right, the right next step or how to get out of some area of your life where you're feeling stuck or overcome some challenge in your life, what happens if you have too much information and you're relying solely on your head, logic, right, and rationale, is that you don't end up actually making any movement. You just end up getting more and more information, asking more people, doing pros and cons lists, but it doesn't actually serve you in moving forward towards either overcoming your challenge or moving forward and getting out of being stuck and moving closer to what it is you desire. And obviously, <laughs> this is pretty normal, especially in Western culture. We're very heady, very much a rational, logical society. And I, for sure, have been there so many times. I was the queen of analysis. I'm naturally a learner, and so I'm drawn to just read and learn and just keep doing that. But obviously, you can just become overwhelmed with information, and that doesn't actually, again, get you out of that place of being stuck. So what I'm gonna share with you are some steps to take to help you get out of that madness and actually move towards what it is you desire so you don't swim around in analysis paralysis for much, for too much longer. And hopefully now you can use this anytime you start to notice you're spiraling into analysis paralysis and get yourself out of it as quickly as possible and get yourself moving as quickly as possible. So if you want to, Monica, you can think of a situation and you can apply these steps to that situation right now. So the first step obviously is wanting to find a way to help you get out of the craziness, right? And so of course, ideally we want to quiet our mind as much as possible. And sometimes the best way to do this is to get out of your current situation. So change locations, change your activity. If you're sitting down, get up and walk around. If you're inside, go outside. One thing I've also been playing around with a lot lately is, is disorienting yourself. So putting yourself in situations that aren't normal to you, they're out of your comfort zone, that are unfamiliar, because then you're not able to rely on the normal modes of thinking because everything is different and you have no prior experience to judge from, right? So that's the first part, is to think of some ways to disrupt the pattern to help you start to quiet the craziness in your mind. And the second part, Equally important is to then, since we're trying to, not trying, we are quieting our mind and we're disrupting our current system and disorienting ourselves a little bit. The next step is and then to connect with your body. So get out of the head, get into the body. This is critical, right? And to start to play around with, okay, so this feeling of analysis paralysis, obviously there's a decision that needs to be made or something needs to shift or change and you're feeling stuck, right? And so it's to identify, is there anxiety brewing around this? And then differentiate, is this anxiety because I'm actually excited about what's possible? Or is this anxiety because I'm actually dreading what I think I might have to do, right? And then play with those two sides, right? So is there more fear around this? And how can I, and where do I feel that in my body? And then what would it feel like the opposite, right? If I was loving what was next and I was loving the next opportunity for me and what are those two options right so if it's playing to cop to like to stay or to go or to do this thing or that thing play around with which one feels heavy 
and which one feels lighter, right? So often when we dread something, we feel it in our gut, like heaviness in our gut, like, oh, I just don't want to do this. I don't want to call this person. I don't want to go to this thing. And when it's the opposite, when you're excited, sometimes you feel like lightness in your chest and like maybe a little tingling and butterflies. So they might both feel like anxiety, but they're very different sensations in your body. And so becoming familiar with those different sensations so you can notice, okay, this is fear, excitement fear, or this is fear, dread fear, meaning I don't actually want to do this versus actually I do want to do this. It just kind of scares me a little bit. And so really starting to feel around with the different decisions, where do you feel it in your body? And what is that connecting to? Is that connecting to love? Is it connecting to fear? Is it connecting to should? Or is it connecting to desire? And the next step is taking action. So following the energy, the high energy. So the energy of excitement, the energy of desire, the energy of joy. And when you're in that space, that's when you're going to get more in tune with your intuition. And the key here is when you get that hit of intuition, have, I mean, most of us have our phones on us all the time, right? So take your phone out, maybe record yourself talking or type a note. So you are starting to honor what's surfacing and then ideally acting immediately. So if you're out on a walk or if you're in the car and you get a hit of intuition, write it down or record it. Obviously, if you're driving, <laughs> record it. But then as soon as possible, act on that intuition. So don't just be like, oh, I'll do that later or that's not that important because your intuition is the key to starting to move through this analysis paralysis and it's the key to making decisions quickly and confidently. But what happens is we lose touch with that and we start to distrust, distrust ourselves and we don't feel connected to our intuition. And so this is about building that trust with yourself and your intuition. So when you get the hit, taking action on it immediately, you're starting to build trust within yourself and within your intuition so that it's going to come to you much more easily and much more often because now you're in more in tune with it. And all the steps we talked about before is helping you become more in tune with it, right? So quieting the mind, getting into the body, and then being open and receptive and immediately taking action. And this is tricky because a lot of times it's inconvenient, it feels uncomfortable, it feels silly or ridiculous, it might even feel kind of scary, and that's... <laughs> The trick is you have to trust your intuition and do it anyway, right? So even if it seems unrelated to the issue that you're actually struggling with, to not worry about it and actually do it anyway. So some examples from my life, when I was starting my business, there was a workshop I wanted to go to that wasn't related at all to my business. And I had no, it was no, there was no connection. There was, I'm not going to, I had no idea in my head of going there to make connections, right? It was, I was going there to learn because it was something I was interested in. And by going to that uh, um, workshop, I just shared a little bit about myself, not a whole lot actually. And a woman came up to me afterwards and asked for my business card, which I didn't even bring. <laughs> so we set up a meeting and she became one of my clients. And that was just for me, just trusting my intuition that this was something that had energy I had that hit of like, I really want to go to this. And instead of being like, oh, it doesn't, you know, it's not related to my business and I don't really have time and it doesn't make sense and that's kind of silly. Why are you putting time into that? I just went and that's, again, it wasn't related to my business and it resulted in a client, right? And often for me, the times I feel the most connected to my intuition is early in the morning and right before bed. So a lot of times right before bed, I'll write stuff down and a lot of those ideas have actually led to me getting clients. So you never know when it's going to hit you, but the more you can practice tuning in and cultivating it and trusting it and acting on it immediately, the easier it will come to you and the easier it will be for you to make decisions and to trust it's the right decision, even if it seems ridiculous, right? Okay. All right. So I would love to hear from you all. What are some things that block you from really connecting with your intuition and what are some stories you might have of you really being in tune with your intuition what did it lead to and if you are a female entrepreneur and are feeling stuck and feel like your business is just taking over your life and it's like this monster that you're feeding instead of it being this thing that feeds you 
I would love to talk to you more about how we can work together because that's totally my thing. I love it. Helping entrepreneurs get unstuck and really turn their business around so their business is working for them and they have more time off and more joy, which leads to more impact and more income. So it's a win-win all around. All right. Thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to talk to you all again soon. Bye.